Hi, I'm DJ Ware. On this episode of the Cyber Gizmo, I have been working pretty hard to get, as you know, trying to get the ZFS stuff done, but I'm going to make a pause. I'm going to go and I've gotten a lot of comments from people about, what about this file system? What about this file system? What about, I do these twice a year. So I'm going to do this one now because uh, in a couple of days, it'll be 2025. And that's usually when I do it is around the first of the year. This is my best file system in 2025. This is an analysis of what I consider the most, the more either commonly used ones or the more advanced newcomers. And uh, this, I have to say, this one was kind of interesting. It, what did I test? Let's, let's start with that. I started with uh, uh, Bcache FS, ButterFS, EXT4, Stratus is something I have looked at in the past. XFS is, uh, of course, a, uh, one of the mainstays for Linux a long time. ZFS, yeah, I'm going to include them because I think uh, I have it kind of close to real world, probably not exactly, but it's pretty close. Uh, so, but I still think there's tuning that could be done on all of these. So I'm not saying that this is uh, my end all be all. So this is just my first whack at getting a, a, let's call it a rough cut tune of the file systems to try to eke out as much performance out of them as you can. Just remember that whenever you're tuning file systems, what you're really doing is you're, you're, you're tweaking it to handle a particular workload. The, this attempt was to use hardware as of course, I, uh, <clears throat> I chose a single distribution and that was Fedora 41. The third thing was was to at least try to do some tuning with each one of those file systems to try to get so that one didn't have an advantage over another. IO Zone 3 we use for the benchmarks, of course, which is what I always use. So what did I test on? So the hardware is an MSI Prestige 16 AI EVO laptop. I've used it before. It's an Intel Core Ultra 7. It's a 155H processor, which puts it kind of right in the middle. Uh, it has 32 gig of RAM, and the uh, drive that we'll be testing is a dedicated Western Digital SN850X NVMe drive. That's two terabytes. It is standalone. It's not being used by the operating system. Uh, so, it, yeah, it's, it's, this is a direct test against the NVMe with nothing else competing for it. Uh, there, this is uh, Fedora KDE Workstation 41. Uh, it is current, as, uh, as far as all the packages are concerned, as of 8 a.m. this morning at the time I'm making this video on December the 30th. Uh, IOZone is uh, version 506. It's, it's the most current one of it right now. And uh, Linux kernel is 612.6-200, which is, uh, as of today is the most current. The caveats to EXT4 and XFS was, yeah, it was my hope to do that. I did RTFM. It said both of them supported up to 64K blocks. Uh, however, that apparently on at least Fedora is wishful thinking. Both file systems accepted the change during the make file system part of it. But there was a warning that said, hey, this is a non-portable file system and that are you sure you want to do this uh, because you won't be able to move this to another distribution or even uh, if there's a change that comes down the pike, you may end up losing your data. <laughs> so, yeah, it's never a good time. It's never a good thing to argue with the file system when it starts throwing stuff like that at you. EXT4 went a little further. It actually failed to mount after that uh, because it it was having super block errors. And that's usually, in my experience, points that it can't get the metadata because it's blocked wrong. So it's trying to get it at one block and, and the, the data was written to the drive with a different block. And yeah, then they don't find each other. So anyway, so much for uh, read the effing manual. Uh, as far as ButterFS tuning the block sizes, well, apparently mere mortals aren't allowed to do that. And the same with Stratus. 
I hope they change this, and uh, and so I'm not pointing a finger and yelling at them. But uh, yeah, I don't consider that a, a good thing. So let's look at the tests and uh, and just kind of look at them for what they are. So Bcash, ButterFS, ext4, and XFS, they are all kind of in the ballpark. Bcash FS is still struggling, I would say. There's some, uh, as you'll see during the benchmarks, there's some inconsistencies in the way it does things. So ButterFS, uh, ButterFS is continuing to improve up through about the second concurrent user, and then it drops back. So, and we kind of saw, I kind of saw that behavior before, but it's the drive performance on these drives is around. 7100 I think it is or megabits per second so this is pretty close to that um, ext4 is pretty even I mean through its right performance it's pretty I mean that's not our all the way up to the what the drive should do but you know there is some overhead and writing to the journal and so forth so it is it's good I mean it's not there terrible Stratus does pretty well here as well. I wouldn't call that terrible either. Uh, XFS is just pulling its, it's just doing its job like always. It, it just does it. ZFS, we've seen this before on Linux where it's worse here because I have sync set to standard. I don't have a slog and I don't have a L2 arc built. So that's definitely going to affect things here. Read, this is a snapshot in time of where things are in my lab. So just realize that. Uh, Bcache FS, yeah, see how far down it is. It's not even close to the drive performance. So it's struggling here in the reads. I would think reads would be a lot faster. ButterFS does really well in this test on reads, of course. That's close. You know, it's within, you know, it's it's close to the drive performance. EXT4, uh, it's in that same ballpark with ButterFS. They're, you know, they're, they're hanging out together. It's working well. ButterFS, I think, has improved a lot. I will say that it has improved a lot. They're, they're all doing well. I mean, you got Stratus and XFS. They're, uh, there's a lot. They're, all the improvements that have been going on have basically leveled this field. Uh, at least in the read and write of sequential files. Uh, now ZFS, this is clearly reading out of memory. So the the arc is it's it's basically loaded up the 32 gig of memory and it's running out of memory. So yeah, and which is fine. I mean, memory is faster than disk, and then you kind of want that. And at least I do. Rereads uh, again. BcacheFS is just it's not anywhere close to the drive performance. ButterFS, uh, it scales up and then kind of falls back a little bit. I saw this behavior before. EXT4 is pretty even, and uh, Stratus is too, and so is XFS. Stratus has really improved here as well. Yeah, they're, I mean, it's close to XFS performance, and yet, so reread on the ZFS again. This is coming out of memory, and that's what you would kind of expect it to look like, and it does look like that. F reads. I was a little shocked at this one. Bcache FS takes off and does very well, except until it gets out to the fifth uh, user, and then it kind of rolls off. Uh, ButterFS does pretty well, too, here. It ramps up scales up and gets way up there. Uh, remember, this are, these are stream reads. This is a buffered stream read. It's coming out of memory. That's the way it's supposed to work. EXT4 is about maybe a thousand faster in the end game here. Stratus is not very well. It's not handling things very well. It's kind of, if you'll notice, it's kind of on par with BcacheFS. XFS is the winner by far in this category, and ZFS does not do well here. F right, Bcache FS kind of falls apart here. It did really well in the early part of it. Uh, I would say it was on par with ButterFS and EXT4 and 
maybe a little bit slower than Stratus and a little bit slower than XFS. But uh, yeah, it, it was doing well. And then as the load built up, it didn't have any concurrency. ButterFS does, I would say, well. It does well here. Not as well as, as XFS, but it does. It's, it's, it's fine. It's, it's doing good. It's faster than the drive, but not by a whole lot. EXT4, um, yeah, eh, yeah it's, it's okay, but it ain't great. Uh, Stratus and XFS are if you have if you have this kind of workload where this streaming is what you need to do then use XFS. ZFS is not doing well here. <laughs> Mixed workload, uh, yeah. Bcash FS it it ramps up but just not as much as it should. Uh, it's 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 doing fine but it's not. It's not going where I would think it should go. ButterFS is pretty even, uh, and so is EXT4, and so is Stratus, and so is XFS. ZFS is, handles this workload very well. PREAP, these are C buffered reads, the ones where you can position into the file. BcacheFS, slow, uh, and the rest of them are are all even, I would say. There's some differences a little bit, but on the first on the first uh, work worker, but after that they all even out. Uh, and and there, this is drive performance that's bumping up against the top speed of the drive, so which is where you would kind of expect it to be. ZFS is using memory, so that's why it does so well here. But again, that's P right, um, B cache FS. Does it it ramps up smoothly? It just doesn't carry up and 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 get fast soon. It, it takes its time getting there. ButterFS very even. Uh, Ext4 very a little bit more even, and, and in some cases slightly faster. It could be noise. Stratus is a little bit slower, and XFS is if xfs is the if you want to really see what the effect of stratus is because you are adding all these things i did turn there was a snapshot that was on on stratus i wanted i did it purposely to see if the rights would have an impact and i think they might have i think they might have and uh, zfs do, is not doing well in this workload at all Random reads, Bcash, nope. <laughs> ButterFS, balanced. EXT, balanced. Stratus, balanced. XFS, balanced. ZFS, yeah, I'm running out of memory and just blazing like crazy on this workload. And random reads, you, I would not expect memory to really have all that much of effect, but if if your entire file is sitting in memory, then yeah, I guess yeah it would. <laughs> but in a real world example, it probably wouldn't be. <laughs> but no, you'd probably have some peaking kind of behavior. Bcash ramps up nice, but doesn't keep going. Rewrite, yeah, kind of the same kind of behavior. Uh, where yeah, I would say it's kind of the same behavior. It's you have ButterFS, except this time it's I think XFS is right there with it in second, uh, and then third is ext4, and fourth is stratus. Bcash, might, you might consider that faster than ZFS. At least for the high-end workloads, it would, I would say it is. Reverse read, uh, yeah, they're, uh, yeah, <laughs> they're, uh, they're all even, again, uh, on the, the ButterFS, ext, stratus, and xfs. Bcash again, not not keeping up, and ZFS news and memory. Stride read again, uh, Bcash. It needs work. It, it it but I guess if you're just trying to get it to work first, then yeah, okay, I can understand. You, you're just trying to get things to work, and then and then eventually you'll get around to working on making it run fast. As you can see, ButterFS is definitely a good. It's really in this in this tier in the middle where you have ButterFS, EXT, Stratus, and XFS. It's really going to boil down to your workload, right? So if you're doing things with compilers, if you're compiling a lot of code, yeah, pick from the middle. You'll be fine. Or ZFS if you want things to really rock and run fast. GeoMean. So 
As far as the GeoMe is concerned, I would say it, it would go something like this. Uh, ignore you know, ZFS would be first, and then second would be XFS, followed by uh, Stratus, then ButterFS, then EXT. Yeah, I think. I think I would go that. Man, maybe. I don't know. It's so close. And this isn't really helping me. I need a GeoMe to the GeoMe, you know, I think. All right, so let's let, let me give you a recap of kind of what I saw from this run using this performance tuning. The strengths of ButterFS, is, it's good. All-around performance has consistent scaling. Uh, its weakness is that in mixed and random workloads, it trails behind XFS. Uh, and the best use case, oddly enough, is in mixed workloads, uh, which is one of the ones that was kind of uh, trailing XFS. But though that happened when you got out to the uh, high performance or the ones where you were really scaling out the workload to four and five. So if it's moderate scaling, like one, two, and three concurrent users, yeah, it, it's going to be a good choice there. Bcache FS, it has exceptional read write and read and F read at the lower worker counts, but it rolls off. And I don't think it has the con the, consist the consistency it needs to have to join the ranks of a of a of a Linux file system just yet. Streaming and single thread workloads, I think it's its best use case if you want to use it. I would not be afraid to use it, but I'd still I'd still would be concerned a little bit. I I have not run this long enough yet. Uh, XFS is of course excellent in all workloads. It's highly consistent. It's been around a long time. There's a slight dip in the F write at low worker counts with uh, XFS. We've seen that consistently for the past well four years that I've been doing this. High performance general purpose workloads is where I would put it. Uh, EXT4, it's reliable, it's balanced. What else can you say about it? It performs. It lags behind XFS in, when you get into high concurrency, and I think a lot of that is just the overhead of the journaling. Everyday workloads and varied patterns, EXT4 is fine. It's still the default file system on many distributions. ZFS, superior for read-heavy and concurrent workloads. It's where it does well. Uh, there's something going on in FWrite that's a weakness uh, that's going on with this particular workload. Uh, enterprise use, definitely data integrity is its thing. That's what it, it tries to manage. Better resilience. Uh, they say redundancy. That was That's that's my take on things. And, uh, and this was... Uh, this was an interesting set of benchmarks to run, uh, trying to get this automated because that'll help save me time and they'll help me turn these around faster. And it certainly has done that. So anyway, that's all I had today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you did, please like and subscribe. And I hope to see you again after the new year. And uh, bye for now.